of all the watercraft competitions held around the world, the hot products Mark Han Memorial 300 at Havasu is truly unique. At 300 miles, it is the longest continuous PwC endurance race in the world. The race is held each year to honor a former racer and friend to many, Mark Hahn, whose untimely death during a watercraft race in 2004 was a stunning blow to so many in the sport he had helped to build. This year, Yamaha is the presenting sponsor for the Mark Hahn 300 at Havasu. And from the light of dawn on race day, it looked like a great day for Yamaha to do so, as the smooth conditions forecast for the day were once again very favorable to Yamaha's smooth water strengths. Last year's Iron Butt winner and overall runner-up Mike Klippenstein had returned in hopes of putting two Yamaha FX SVHO watercraft into the winner's circle, regardless of a foot injury that would have sidelined most humans. You know, uh, fourth year at the uh, Mark Hahn Lake Havasu, definitely my favorite place in the world without a doubt. Uh, really honored to race this race uh, for Mark Hahn. Uh, he's a very passionate guy about uh, watercraft, you know, similar to myself. And, uh, you know, it's very privileged to race this race on his behalf. You know, Scott Watkins from Yamaha hooked me up with a couple boats. I uh, can't thank those guys enough for believing in me. R&D prep, Turbo Yamahas, a uh, bit of a fracture to the right foot three weeks ago riding dirt bike in the snow, but that's all good. Uh, we won't feel that today, but we'll feel it tomorrow. I thought I'd throw a little curve in it this year. I partnered up with uh, Dennis Bilikoff from Russia for the Open class, and uh, Brian Baldwin, he's a strong rider that did the Aquax series last year. Uh, winning the Ironman last year was a, a good success, but I really want to win the overall this year. That's my primary focus. You know, three classes, two boats. I'm ready to tear this thing down today. Without question, rider and equipment attrition play a major role in determining the winner of this race. No one knows that better than the defending championship team of Frenchman Jean Bruno Pastorello and Jean Baptiste Body. Team Pastorello Ultras utilize the OEM supercharger rather than an aftermarket turbo. They may not be the fastest skis on the course, but they are very well sorted out and rarely experience mechanical issues. Regardless, Body was obviously discouraged by the smooth conditions that were contrary to the rough conditions that Kawasaki Ultras shine in. This condition for, for me is no good. It's flat, flat, flat. Next year, Turbo is very fast, very speed. My ski is very slow, not very speed. Normally, no problem, you finish. One of the fast turbos that body referenced was that of the Russian duo of Yuri Rebiko and Sylvain Ente. Last year, Yuri set a blazing pace that decimated the rest of the field until a hull breach brought his day to an end with just two laps to go. This year, Yuri was back with an all-new ski and high hopes of seeing this race through with a win. Of particular interest to Sea-Doo aficionados was the entry of one of the best Sea-Doo racers on the planet, James Bushel, who teamed up with Les Cook to ride one of Bombardier's latest offerings, a 2016 RXPX 300. To say the least, a lot of people were interested to see how the new RXPX 300 would stack up against the Yamaha and Kawasaki competition. Yeah, so I've got a new Sea-Doo RXPX, uh, the new 300, obviously it's pretty good, you know, it's, it's a stock boat, um, but I'm in the stock and the open class, so hopefully we can go with reliability and good pit stops, hopefully it will last and uh, be quick enough to do good. I'll go do the parade lap, because obviously I've never been here, so I don't know where I'm going. I was watching some of your videos uh, before I come to get some tips and see what everybody does and uh, see what the go is. Also new for this year was the inclusion of a watercraftrider.com supported entry piloted by racing legend Flying Brian Smith and jet pilot Steve Goldberg. The ski was a 2016 Yamaha VXR built to compete in the runabout naturally aspirated class, optimized with some of the finest offerings from Works, Riva and Jet Trip and dialed into perfection by Yamaha factory hired gun Dean Cherrier of Dean's team fame. Uh, so we had a, uh, a fairly good turnout of sponsors. Uh, we worked with uh, Dean pretty heavily this week as far as tuning the boat goes. Uh, stock out of the box, we were just a hair over 60 miles an hour. Um, going into uh, today, uh, after all the add-ons and mods that we did, uh, we're looking right around 68. So we're pretty pleased with, the, uh, with, with what we got out of it and uh, should make for an interesting race. The course was 30 laps on a triangular 10-mile course circumventing the north end of Lake Havasu, starting with a classic Le Mans-style beach start. Once 
again to start with Staggered, with the stand-up class starting two minutes after the runabouts. At the California side halfway mark of lap one, Mark Gurner of the Gurner Heidler PwC offshore team had a clear race lead with their turbocharged Yamaha FX SVHO. At the close of lap one, Yuri insisted that he lead the way into lap two with a bold pass for the lead. They were both followed by Klippenstein and team Ariano Garcia. Pastorola was in seventh. The Aswar brothers decided to have a little family fun with what appeared to be a grudge match for fifth place ending lap one. James Bushel entered the chicane in 10th place and exited in ninth. The turning buoys for the start finish chicane were very close to shore this year, a bit too close for comfort for a few racers, resulting in a cobblestone hole truing and extrude hone of a few pumps. In the stand-up ski class, Jeremiah Marino led the way for lap one, but Chad Zeman was quick to take the lead in lap two and lead the class for most of the race. As we said, attrition always plays a major role in the outcome of this race, but this year, it seemed to be particularly vicious. While most are mechanical in nature, there were a surprising number that were due to severe fuel starvation from an empty tank. One shocker was in lap three, 31 minutes in, when Yuri came in on the hook. The cause was reported to be battery issues. It took a while, but they were able to find a replacement and get back underway. Another shocker was on lap six. Only 54 minutes into the race, James Bushel signaled to enter the pits with a ski severely down on power. It was later diagnosed to be a damaged piston that cut his day short. All of this allowed Baldwin and Klippenstein to take over the overall lead until his open class ski sprung a leak and was sinking on the west end of the course about mid-race. Mike's mechanic, Mark Queen, was able to identify the problem and had a recommendation for Mike. Lesson learned, don't use cheap clamps. <laughs> Unfortunately, the ski had ingested too much water to continue. The good news for Mike is that he and Dennis Belikov were leading and went on to win the manufacturer's stock class. Ribico and NT continued to have issues with their ski. It was functioning, but it was obvious that something still wasn't right. With Ribico and Enti struggling and Klippenstein's open class ski on the beach, the Spanish team of David Ariano and Enrique Garcia were more than happy to lead the race until the curse of being the race leader nipped them with a failed supercharger clutch on lap 16, about two and a half hours into the race. At the race midpoint, the Team Smith and Goldberg Yamaha VXR was leading the runabout naturally aspirated class. Brian is a closed course specialist. He also has plenty of endurance experience, so he felt right at home. Endurance racing is a lot more relaxed in my opinion. Um, in endurance racing, you got a long race ahead of you. There's no reason to get yourself worked up. I approach it the same way, you know, each race day. You know, you gotta make sure that your mind is set and uh, your body's prepared. Grab a handful of throttle and hammer down. Brian and Steve went on to play second in the runabout naturally aspirated class, missing first by a measly 40 seconds. By lap 25, Jean Bruno's son, Hugo Pastorello, and teammate Didier Merle de Alais had worked their way up to the number three spot, but fate had other plans as attrition once again raised its ugly head and relegated the 88 ski to the trailer. Pastorello and Body played it safe by easing off the engine just a bit for longevity, but you wouldn't guess that was their strategy as they didn't look slow by any means. Behind Pastorello, the Texas-based team of Sarah Smith and John Ford, who led the four-stroke stock class, were second overall. Behind them, the Portuguese team of Philippe Philippe and Carlos Truda slipped into third place with their R&D racing-tuned Ultra. In fourth place overall, Axa Aswar rode a drama-free race on his Yamaha FX SVHO. In the stand-up class, the bullet racing team of Aaron Gwicki and Cody Copenhaver passed Zeman to take the lead in the closing laps of the race and closed the deal for the class win. No doubt the shocker of the day, the finish that not even Body or Pastorello would have dared to predict four hours before. A repeat win for Team Pastorello in smooth water. This race is very long, it's a difficult race and long race and 
very, very difficult and if you don't have ability, you can, you can win. So uh, I'm very happy. My team do work very hard for win and Jean-Baptiste is uh, a good race. Uh, he win world final, he win with me. Uh, it's very important for us to win and uh, I'm very happy. Congratulations to the Kawasaki France supported Team Pastorello for a sound race plan that overcame conditions that were stacked so heavily against them to lead the way to a convincing top three Kawasaki Ultra domination. As far as we're concerned, never say never again to a Kawasaki Ultra flatwater victory.